Good morning and welcome to Hobbycraft TV. I'm Charlotte and I'm the artisan here at Hobbycraft Woking. I'm here today to demonstrate some fantastic watercolour painting techniques using some of the great deals available in store and online. We have our art sale running all summer, so do pop in and grab some great deals. Firstly, I want to quickly mention the work we've done in Hobbycraft stores to ensure our customers and colleagues are as safe as possible in store. We've got sanitation points at the front of the store to wash your hands and baskets. And we've got queue controls, limited numbers in store and on stairs, as well as floor markers to maintain social distancing. We've also got screens in front of colleagues at checkouts to give protection to colleagues and customers. And we do encourage the use of face coverings within our stores. For more details, head to the store status page on our website. And do stay until the end to find out about our Artist of the Year competition. Remember, we are live, so if you have any questions about the demo or products being used, pop them in the comments below and I'll try and answer some live on air. But if we don't get around to answering your question, they will be answered in the comments afterwards. Let's get started on this demo. So today we're going to be making a dreamy sunset watercolour piece. So this is one that I've done earlier. This is what we're going to be painting today. So I'm going to be going through some basic watercolour techniques as well as the biggest one which is the wet on wet technique which I've done here for the sky area I don't know about you but I this is exactly where I want to be right now so let's get started so today I'm using the sea white watercolor paper that's also available on our sale for half price at the moment which is a great deal so I've drawn out my scene this is the one that I'm going to be doing I just loved love love the colors here and the contrast subscribe gone for this one so we're going to draw out our scene first so make sure you've always got your horizon line down and then draw out your basic shapes don't worry about too much detail as we'll be painting this in so we're going to be doing the wet on wet technique what is the wet on wet technique it's where i'm going to be putting down a layer of water and then dropping in lots of different colors so first thing we need to mix up our colors beforehand so and here I'm using the Winsor & Newton set of watercolours. So with watercolours, we always want to do lightest first. So I'm going to go for a nice cadmium yellow. To make your watercolours lighter, you want to be adding more water to them. Then I want to make a really lovely orange. So I'm going to go cadmium yellow again and a little bit of cadmium red to make that really warming tone. Then I think I want some crimson because the sky goes to more of like that pinky toned. So we're gonna use the pinky red, the crimson. And then I'm gonna make a purple to blend over the top. So I'm gonna take that crimson again And then I'm going to go for ultramarine, which is this gorgeous royal blue colour. So I have my colours basically all mixed down. So always make sure you've made enough paint as well, because once you've put your water on, you want to act quite quickly to make sure everything blends together. So I'm wetting it's a really big hake brush. This is also by C. White. It's a one inch one. So I am popping this and then I'm going to be wetting. I'm just going to wet the sky now. So I'm going to do it in sections. So we're going to do sky first. So make sure it's wet enough, but not too wet that it's going to be dripping everywhere. So then I might go for one of these um, mop type brushes that's really good for soaking up and carrying the water. We've got, we can sell these in the store. So I'm going to do lightest first. So I'm going to go in for my cadmium yellow. Oh, I think I have some blue on here. Let's just get rid of that. The watercolors can change quite quickly. So make sure you're always working with clean brushes unlike this one. <laughs> So let's get some more cadmium yellow because I do not want a green sky right now. 
okay so I'm gonna be quite gentle with my application here so I'm doing horizontal brush movements where I want my light so anywhere on your painting that you want to keep the white you can either just go around it or you can use masking fluid. Now masking fluid is brilliant because it masks off your area and leaves it white. So if you had white clouds or anything, you could definitely pop that on first before you start painting. So then I'm gonna go to my orange just to transition this. Because for sunsets, you really want that transition between these colors to be really nice and smooth. So make sure you don't go into this yellow patch here because that's where that bright sun is. So then I'm going in with my crimson. So I'm going more pinky. And you can see because I've done, I've pre-wetted my paper, this color is just blending really beautifully. I'm going to go right to the top to make sure it doesn't dry out. Don't worry if the paper starts to buckle, it will come, calm down. So then I'm going to go in with my purple. So using the wet on wet technique, you can see already these colours are blending together really lovely so we're not going to get any giant splodges or anything when it all dries so keep looking at your reference picture so on here on mine <clears throat> I can see that it's getting more blue so I think I need to go a little bit darker so you apply your darker colours much later on, it's always lightest first. Because if you put this blue colour on first, it might overwhelm everything and you can't paint the yellow over the top. Let's maybe go for a little bit more pink in there just to transition everything. Because I, I don't know about you, but I like really, really vibrant skies. I think it just looks really beautiful. Okay, right, we have our sky. So we just need to let this dry for a couple of minutes. Do we have any questions at the moment? Uh, not just yet on the comments. We're having a, it looks like a couple of uh, connectivity problems, but we're just gonna keep going. If you are experiencing connectivity problems, uh, come back after the show and it will have sorted itself out. We'll also put it onto YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. So- oh, a little bit loud there. Let's now start while the sky is drying on our lovely seascape. So, in this sea, it's very much similar to the sky in terms of colours, but it's a bit darker. But we've still got this nice area of light there in the middle. So again, we want to start with this light first and then work darker. So mixing up our colours again first before we start. So going for that cadmium yellow and cadmium red to make that orange again. And then we're going to go for the crimson for the pink. So I'm just going to restock these colours. Because there's nothing worse than running out of colours when you're halfway through painting something. So we're going to make sure that we pre-wet this area again. So I'm using that hake brush. I think the bottom is, yeah, basically dry. So that's fine. So 
to make sure it's nice and wet. Perfect. So I might go in with a slightly smaller brush because I need a more precise area. So this is the De La Rowney Aquafine Sable Round number six that we also sell in store here. Sable brushes are great because they really, really take up that water. They're the perfect watercolor brushes. So again, I'm gonna apply that lightest color first. Thinking about where the reflection of the sun is gonna be hitting that water. So we've had a question come in from Patrick. Okay. Uh, what kind of watercolors are you using at the moment? So I'm using the um, Windsor & Newton um, Professional Artist watercolor set. Now we've got some watercolor sets like this in store. I don't believe we have the artist ones, but we have the Cotman range, which are absolutely brilliant and almost as good as the artist ones. Um, so they're absolutely perfect for, for if you want to get started with watercolors or you're already using watercolors and you just want another set. These are absolutely brilliant for that. I think we have one of the Cotman tube sets actually on half price too, which is brilliant. So I'm going to keep going with my orange. So you can really see how that's blending together. And then I'm going to go in with that crimson. So watercolours do dry lighter. So as you can see, the sky is starting to dry a little bit paler and the sea looks quite intense in comparison. So I'm just going to blend this a little bit. Another good thing about using these transition colours is so that we don't get muddy colours. Because if I was to put the blue next to this orange, you're going to end up with brown. So it's not going to be as vibrant. So then I'm going to go in with this purpley. transition. So uh, Caroline is saying it's fascinating to watch the scene evolve as you're doing it. Thank, Thank you, you Caroline. Caroline. So I think I want to go a little bit darker just to really give that impact to the sea. So I'm just going to mix a lot more ultramarine. And then I might add maybe a touch of burnt umber just to deepen that colour a little bit. So I'm still using those really light brush strokes just to pull that colour in. So make sure, especially if you're doing a C, that your brush strokes are in that horizontal way. Because if you paint it vertically, it might look like the sea is falling down, which might not be the best look. Maybe you're going for a waterfall, that's fine. Right, I think I'm pretty happy with how this sea is looking now. And you can see that this wet on wet technique has let these colours blend together, so it's not going to be any harsh edges, it's all going to be nice and blended through. So. Once we've done all of our lightest colours, our first layer, we're now going to be moving on to the slightly darker ones. So I'm going to be looking to make these clouds, which are this sort of crimson and blues, purples going on. They're going to have a really nice contrasted effect. Make sure though that your background is definitely dry, because if it's not, it will still just bleed out. So we're now going to be doing a wet on dry technique. So I might just give this a little bit of a wipe, clean it up. So I'm making two colours here. So like you can see on my uh, original one that I've done, the clouds do stand out quite a lot. And you can see that they're contrasted against that sky. So they're really quite pinky and then you've got the purples coming through. So I'm going to make my lighter, so I'm going to go for my crimson again and then pop in a little bit of blue 
to give me sort of like a magenta colour, which I think is beautiful. One of my favourite colours. And then we're going to bring in that darker ultramarine and burnt umber mix. So are you ready for another question? Yeah, go for it. So Jane is asking, what paper are you using? There's a lot of water on it. Lovely colours. I'm using the sea white watercolour paper, which is this one. So at the moment it's actually half price in our sale, which is brilliant. It takes up the water really lovely. So I've used a lot of watercolour paper over the years and this one doesn't really buckle at all. It's brilliant. It can take a lot of water because I know some other papers sometimes can give you that rippling effect or really bubble up and not have a good time. But this is, I definitely recommend this pad. So let's get onto these clouds. So again, I'm going to be using my number six um, De La Rowney Aquafine Sable Round. So I'm going to dip into my magenta colour. So painting clouds. The secret is keeping your brush on the paper, so don't lift off too much. Now, clouds are mostly puffy at the top and a bit flatter at the bottom, so keep that in mind when you're painting. Have a really nice light touch though. So, and within each of these shapes that we've done, we can create our own wet on wet technique. So this is already wet, so then I can drop in this darker bit just to give it more dimension and you can see it's already blending out it's doing its thing so it's a lot less work for blending so do keep looking at your reference picture though that's one of my absolute best tips So I'm being really nice and subtle when I'm getting towards the middle. Always make sure you've got enough paint on your brush, otherwise you'll end up with a dry brush look, which is not the best for a lovely soft sky. So let's pop in some of that darker purple, just to give a little bit of dimension. And that paint is really just doing the work for me, blending out now. There's a nice big one at the top. You can also do some almost like stippling effect to get the really, really wispy ones. This one's quite dark at the top, might have to mix a little bit more. That's all right. All right, let's go back to this nice magenta. So let's do the clouds on this side. So it doesn't matter if they're covering your drawing of the trees at all, because that we're going to go in afterward and paint those trees in because they're darkest on this picture. So I'm laying my brush down and then just doing circular motions for that cloudy fluffy look. And then giving the wispy ones below. And then before it's dried adding in the darker bits on top. So this one is quite dark. Don't know whether you can see on the video here, but I've used a lot of the ultramarine. I use this color a lot. It's a great color for grays, for making purples. It's just beautiful. There we go, and I've got the last couple of wispy ones at the front. 
Now these wispier ones at the front here are looking slightly lighter because as things get further away they get much lighter. So how do we do that? We're just going to add some more water into our magenta mix and that's just going to lighten up that colour. So no need to put white or anything like that in. It's just going to lighten up. Oh, I think I've missed some clouds here. That's all right. So we have uh, Sabrina has asked a question of what uh, pencil do you use to draw the picture before you paint so you can't see any lines underneath? I went for the Derwent graphic pencil today. Um, I normally use HB, H, um, 2H, anything light. Um, but also make sure when you're drawing out that you actually have a really, really light touch to it. Um, I haven't rubbed out any marks or anything like that, but because I've used a really light hand, I haven't pressed hard with my pencil, the lines don't really show through. Um, but it d doesn't matter if your lines do show through with watercolours. There's not a rule in the book that says you have to not have any pencil showing. And also our Derwent graphic pencils are at the moment half price to install, which is brilliant. They are fantastic, fantastic pencils, not just for drawing out for watercolour, but just for general sketching. So we're really getting the wispiness. Let's just add a final one. I think I missed one. So now I'm going to go in and start to pop in a little bit more detail in this sky. So I've done all my main clouds and I'm just going to go for more detail. So I'm using a really, really light touch. Right, I think I'm all done with that sky now. So, normally I would leave this to dry completely before tackling anything dark. Um, but I'm going to start mixing up the colour for now our silhouette, so our last layer. So these lovely palm trees here in this foreground. I think there's a little boat there and some foliage or something at the back there. So let's just give this a clean. So Kathy's asked a question. Mm -hmm. Um, she says, I've never tried painting before, but I find this very inspiring. Do you think a complete beginner could do this? Yes, no, definitely, definitely. Um, the hardest thing is just learning the wet on wet technique, but once you've mastered that, it's the paint does the work for you, the brush does the work for you. Just give it a go though. Just make sure you've got a nice big brush for pre-wetting. That's my biggest tip. Um, if you try to wet the whole page using even like a brush like this, like a round brush, um, you find that the paper just doesn't get wet enough. So make sure it's a nice even layer, so use a nice big brush for that and you'll be absolutely fine. And if you want to do this exact picture, we have a blog post as well. Yes, yes, I also actually made a blog post to run alongside this live. So if you head to the blog, um, you can see my step-by-step -step pictures and information there, as well as all the products I've used and tips as well. So do give that a check out. So let's move on to our silhouette. So the last bit. So I'm going to be making a really, really dark color. Now, I don't want to just use black by itself because that can be quite harsh and it sometimes dries quite flat, especially in watercolors. So I'm going to mix up like a dark purpley color. Now I really want to make sure I've got enough colour here. And I'm going to see if I can add some burnt umber to make a really dark colour. I might need to add a little bit of black. Now it's getting quite dark but I think I want it a little bit darker so I'm just going to grab a little bit of black. So you can always swatch it on a piece of tissue if you're not sure what colour it's going to turn out like. 
because sometimes the colour can appear different in your pan than if you swatch it on like a little piece of kitchen roll. So I think that's going to be dark enough for me. So have I made enough paint? Hopefully, <laughs> we will see. Now you can pre-wet this, but it might give you a lighter effect. So I'm just going to go in just drying, but I'm going to make sure I've got enough paint on my brush so that it doesn't dry with a streaky effect. Now I can already see I have not made enough paint here. So do make sure you make enough. So um, both Caroline and Kathy are asking if you make a mistake, what's the best thing to do to deal with it? So for watercolours, it's not as forgiving as um, acrylics or oils. Um, if you realise you've made a mistake quick enough, you can just dab it off. Um, or you can go over with um, your big wash brush, um, try and brush water over it and then dab it off. Um, but watercolour is not as forgiving, so sometimes it does mean, if you've made a, quite a big mistake, it does mean starting over, but it's not the worst thing. So this definitely looks a lot more paint this time. Let's just swatch it again. Yep, that looks nice and dark. Lovely. So because I've added that purple to it, it's got a nice purpley hue, which works quite well with our sunset. So it's just not as stark if I was just to use black by itself. And these sable brushes are really great at just loading up that paint. If you find you haven't got it dark enough, you can layer over the top. Just make sure it's completely dry before you start layering. There we go. All right. So our last part that we've got to do is our palm tree, palm trees. So I might actually switch to my number two sable round just to get those precise tree trunks in. So I can still see my pencil, even though I've done about two, three layers over the top, I can still see where I've done my marks. So let's just pop these in. So do make sure double check that your background is completely dry, otherwise you'll end up with your palm tree trunk that starts to bleed out into the sea and the sky. Doesn't matter if these are not perfect because it's a natural thing, that's what I always say anyway. So I'm now going to switch back, I think, to my number six to start to do these palm leaves. So these palm leaves are quite thin, they're quite random. So I'm going to do my base of where it looks like it looks like a firework at the moment. It will look like a palm tree in a minute. Just so I know where I'm going to be painting. So you really need to hold your brush up for this to get a nice fine brush straight. You can also flatten your brush to get more of a precise line or just use a really, really thin brush like a liner or something. So keep looking at that reference picture. Okay, now for the fun bit, getting these little leaves on. So we're gonna do like a dry brush type effect. So 
So I'm going to take like a tiny bit of paint and then using the side of the brush, I'm going to start flicking and just dragging that paint down. So I'm just pulling that paint. I've barely got any paint on my brush. So make sure you don't overload your brush. This is like the one time you don't want a lot of paint on there at all. So uh, Jane is asking, are you self-taught? Uh, what's your background? Yes, I'm mostly self-taught. Um, I studied fine art at university though, um, specialising in oil paint. Um, so I mostly am an oil painter, but especially over the past year, and especially during lockdown, I've been obsessed with watercolour because it's just so, so lovely and fluid. Absolutely love it. So I'm laying my brush down and then just flicking these spiky leaves. It's almost like I'm digging like the metal part into the paper almost, that's how flat the brush is. So you can also do it this sort of technique, holding it like that. So we just want to keep on building this up so there's a lot of foliage just in this middle section so just keep building that up less is definitely more with watercolors so it's the one thing that I actually struggle to do is to stop, know when to stop. But the more you do it, the more you know when enough is enough. Right, we'll come back to that one and see if I like how that's going. Let's have a go at the other one. A bit too much paint on there. You can get some really nice texture just by dragging this brush out. You could use a fan brush too if you have one. Um, Charlotte, if you move it slightly to the left, we might be able to zoom in a bit to get a bit of detail. Yeah, of course, this way. Yeah, great. I think it's really nice to have this spiky detail that's contrasting against these like really fluffy clouds. This one is definitely a lot thicker. Make sure that middle of that palm tree is nice and covered and dense. There we go. A bit too much paint. So keep it nice and dry. And in a minute, I'm going to have to tell myself that's enough. Maybe just a couple. 
couple of bits. So you can dab it almost like you're stamping to get a different effect. So Connie said she's missed most of this, um, but don't worry, Connie, this will be up on Facebook mm. afterwards and also will be popping it on YouTube um, early next week. So take a look at our YouTube channel and obviously on our Facebook page. So the only last thing I need to do is just pop in, there's like a tiny little boat. So I might just pop that in. I don't think I originally painted a little boat in before, but I quite like the boat today. So I'm just using that same colour. And then there's also a tiny bit, I think it's just an island or something in the distance. So there's a tiny bit of dark there. I'm just using a tiny stippling type effect. It's lovely. I think I'm all done with this now. Brilliant. So if you have any more questions, do leave them in the comments and I will answer them later. But I hope you've enjoyed this sunset watercolour demo. So, so oh. sorry, I was just going to ask, uh, we have um, one more question. Yes, of course. From Anne, which says, do you always copy from another picture? I'd like to see one of your originals. So I mostly um, use reference pictures. So whether it's one that I've just found on Google or most of the time I actually take my own reference pictures. So especially of animals. Um, I've really been into painting foxes at the moment. So I went down to the British Wildlife Centre last week to get more reference pictures that I can use myself. So I always love using reference pictures because you can actually get a realistic understanding of what it is that you're painting. I mean, sunset landscapes, you can definitely be a bit more creative and use your imagination a bit more if you want to go for something more fantasy. But when I'm painting animals, I definitely want to have a reference picture for me to use just to make sure I've got everything correct. And where can people find your stuff? Just my, my paintings. So you can find them on my um, website, charlottebakerartist.co.uk. Um, and I also have some of my um, original paintings for sale in a local gallery um, called Wildwood that are in Great Bookham too. So, hope you all enjoyed that lovely demonstration. So, now to talk a little bit about our Artist of the Year competition, which is now live. We have three categories. We've got youth, student and adult, and each will win a trophy, which is very nice, and 200 pounds of Hobbycraft gift cards, and an art goodie bag full of products from our favorite brands, and also a showcase of your work on our social media channels, which is very nice. Winners will be chosen by a panel of expert artists and entries close on the 30th of September. We all can't wait to see the amazing art you send us. We have live demonstrations every week from stores ac across the country that you can watch online and craft along to, starting with next Saturday's Pen Drawing Techniques Workshop from Emma, our artisan in Chester, who is amazing, so definitely tune in for that. Thank you so much for joining us. All of these deals are available in store and online. I hope to see you in store soon. I'm in Woking store, so do come in and see me. To find more information on our art sale, just head to our website. Information is on the screen right now and don't forget to come back to see the live pen drawing demo next week. Can't wait to see it.